All right, here we go. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. My first question tonight, I don't want anyone to answer it. I just want you to think about it. Everyone say, think about it. My first question today is, what size dream did you wake up with this morning? Don't answer it. What size dream do you have? I share this with you because no matter where I travel around the world, I meet a lot of young people who don't dream no more. And the reason I share it because there's a, a man, a young man whose birthday we celebrate every year. He have a powerful quote, and his quote goes, I have a but I want you to see it, say it like you mean it. I have a dream. But more importantly, there was a young man in the Bible who had a dream, and his brothers, they didn't like listening to him when he talked about his dream. Do anybody know who that was? Joseph. Say it like you mean it. Joseph. So we're going to have a little bit of fun tonight. First type of dream you can choose. She going to be my friend. You so cute. She big on the inside, but she little on the outside. My hand almost cover your whole arm. <laughs> Everyone say little dream. little dream. In order to achieve anything great in life, you cannot settle for a little dream. So little dream don't move, stand right here. Next type of dream you can choose, how you doing? <laughs> Whatever you like. Everyone say average dream. average dream. Now she's not average, but you know how I know when I meet an average young person? Because they be like, well, I passed. And I'm like, you happy with just getting by? No, you can't settle for a little dream or an average dream. I come here tonight to have what I call a big dream. Yeah. Everyone say big dream. Yeah. Now, what's your name, bro? Jorge. Huh? Jorge. Say it like this, Jorge. Jorge. <laughs> now, Jorge, man, you know what big dream people do? We work hard. We study. For me, Jorge, I was the first one in my family to go to college. Everyone say finish. But you know what we really like to do? We like to eat, Jorge. You see, I like to go to McDonald's and spend my whole $20 on a dollar menu. Because yeah. I love double cheeseburgers. But everyone say bigger. Yeah. I'm going to go a little bigger. Now, what's your name, man? Ethan. Okay. Say so Ethan. Ethan. Okay. So here's the deal, Ethan. You know, see... My man Jorge and all y'all buddies, see, they like to go to McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Chick-fil-A. But me and you, we like to go to the buffet. Because, see, at the buffet, there's no limits. Everyone say no limit. You have to say it like you mean it. Everyone say no limit. There are no limits to how great you can be. So, everyone step back. Step back. My dreams stay in order. Stay in order. I brought something with me tonight. I have with me one thick, very heavy Interstill. Now, I have this interstill with me tonight because I want to talk to you about some bars. See, I, before I could come in here tonight and talk to you about making right choices, listening to right voices, and having dreams, I have to talk to you about some bars. The strongest bars you ever face in your life are not prison bars. The strongest bars you ever face in your life are the bars I call on the inside. One of the strongest bars that keep young people back is a bar called attitude. I don't want to, I don't feel like it, I don't have to attitude. The last time I read my Bible, it said, honor thy mother and thy father. The number one bar that holds young people back, adults back all across the world, is a bar called religion. So many people are bound because they so caught up. Well, I grew up Catholic. I grew up Methodist. I grew up this and I grew up that. Can I just encourage you tonight? Jesus is not about religion. He's about a relationship. And we all been given the power of choice to choose on what side of the bar we're going to live on. So tonight, I'm here for one reason, and that's to help you get rid of the bars. Everyone say no bars. So some of you probably watch a contest on ESPN2. It's called the World's Strongest Men Competition. They actually banned this part because a guy took an interstill like this, placed it behind his neck, and with everything he had, he began to pull so hard, he actually blew his elbow out. We're not going to do that tonight. But what I will attempt to try to do tonight to get rid of the bars, everyone say no bars. No bars. I'm going to attempt to take this interstill, place it on top of my head, and try to bend it. But if you get me fired up, 
like I'm playing against your favorite team. I'm going to attempt to take this steel, place it in the middle of my teeth, and try to just, a lot of people say that's got to be rubber, fake, plastic, phony. I want my big boys back here to check that steel out, see if that's real. Y'all look hungry. You want to take a bite? Is that real? Oh, that's real. Oh, he said, oh, yeah, that's real. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. I have one last thing with me tonight. Please don't laugh at it when I pull it out. I have with me tonight one thick frying pan or skillet. Country folks call it a skillet. Now you wonder, you say, man, this dude already big. What are he doing with a frying pan? Well, I love omelets. But I have this frying pan with me tonight. I thought it'd be appropriate for it tonight. And actually it was in the song. Everyone say change. Here's the thing about that word change. It's a very powerful word. Change is not changed until it's changed. If I don't change, nothing changes. What am I sharing with you tonight? I don't know what kind of situations you've been in. I don't know what kind of household you come from, but I know tonight is a new day. And it's a new day that you get an opportunity to change the shape of some things. So what I'm gonna attempt to do tonight, I'm gonna attempt to take this frying pan, place it in the middle of my chest, and with everything I have, I'm gonna begin to just pull, push, press, bend, squeeze, and I'm gonna try to roll this frying pan up to it look like a steel burrito, man. A lot of people say that's gotta be rubber, fake, plastic, phony. So I want my ladies over here to check that frying pan out, see if that's real. Mama used that for fried chicken, right? She cooks her chicken in there. She said, yeah, they just was laughing. Okay, so real quick, I want to ask this young lady to help me out. You want to help me out real quick? Turn around, face me. And you want to help me out? You've just been bouncing around right here. Y'all ladies stand right here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this into steel. And ladies, what I'm going to do, this bar tonight is going to represent great dreams. Everyone say great dreams. Great, dreams. great, goals. great goals. Great education. Great education. Big faith. So, ladies, what I'm going to do is slightly place everything great in your life on your shoulders, okay? Move this pretty hair out the way and on that side. Now, here's the deal, ladies. When you have something great in your life, you have to hold on to it. Everyone say, hold on to your dream. So, I want you to hold on to this bar with both hands real tight. Both hands. You got to hold on. See, in life, young people, you only have two types of friends. You have dream makers and dream breakers. Dream makers always encourage you to make right choices, but dream breakers, you can leave here tonight, get home, and they talking about, let's fire it up. Let's get drunk, and you know what happens? It steals everything from you. So ladies, I'm gonna apologize right now. I'm gonna attempt to be a dream breaker. I'm gonna attempt to come into your life and try to steal everything from you. So you gotta hold on real tight. Don't let me take it away. She looking like, mommy. All right, here we go. One, two, she looking at you like, girl, you better represent. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, you been working out? Oh, no, she has a little bow flex at home. Every morning she's in the mirror like, bow flex. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, you been doing P90X, huh? <laughs> so tonight we talking about going high. Everyone say high. high. I'm talking about holding on to your dreams. Everyone say hold on, hold on. to your dream. So here's the deal, ladies. Since I'm talking about trying to bend an inch of steel with my teeth, roll a frying pan, I have to get my muscles loose, okay? So one of the ways I'm going to attempt to warm up, I'm going to attempt to get underneath this bar and lift both of these young ladies up and over my head like a couple of barbells, okay? Everyone say teamwork, teamwork. Makes, the dream work. makes the dream work. Now here's the deal. If they start making some noise for y'all, and if I get my music going, I'm going to attempt to get these young ladies up in the air and spin them around like a helicopter, okay? Are y'all ready? Y'all make some noise, help him out, here we go.
Let's get those ladies a big hand clap, y'all. Everyone say, hold on to your dream. Right now, I'm going to tip to take this into steel and bend it with my teeth. Are y'all ready? Yeah. I can't hear you. Are you ready? say no bars right now I'm gonna tip the toughest thing tonight I'm gonna tip to take this frying pan and change the shape everyone say change the shape here we go let's go for it here we go Hey, let's give a big hand to all my volunteers tonight, y'all. Thank you, ladies, for helping me out. Thank you. Y'all can have a seat, big fella. Amen. Whew. Everyone say no bars. Everyone say change the shape. Whoo. That was a lot of energy. So tonight, I want to take you on a trip with me and then take you on this little journey and then take you to my destiny. Is that all right? So... You know, see, the one thing I love about the game of football, it has a first half and a second half. I didn't hear everybody. The one thing I love about the game of football, it has a first half and a second half. Everyone say game time. Game time. This little trip, I grew up in Northern California in a small city. It was a mile and a half big. It was the number one murder capital. I grew up with a mom raising four boys by herself. The first time I ever met my father, I had to bury him. I never knew my dad, but I had a big dream. My dream was to go to the NFL. So I used to run to my mom. I'd be like, Mommy, I'm going to go to the NFL. <laughs> and she'd tell me, you can make it. But you have to be respectful. Everyone say respectful. respectful. She'd tell me, you have to treat others like you like to be treated, and you have to be obedient. But I want to share this second half. Everyone say second half. Everyone say journey. journey. So I get drafted by the Patriots. We get in a training camp. It's hot outside. We have all this equipment on. We running into each other. Boom, and I'm jumping up. Yeah, dog. Let's ball. So I've been blessed to win some very big rings. In order to win those rings, it took a lot of hard work. Everyone say hard work. Hard work. Pays, off. Pays off. But one thing I was very good at was writing out my goals. Everyone say goals. And I had written out on my locker and it said, if I'm trying, I'm flying. But if I don't, I won't. That simply means these three E's I have to share with you that help change my life. Everyone say effort, education, excellence. 
So I make it through training camp. I get to the stadium for the first time. We getting ready for a Monday night football game. We in the locker room. We putting on our pants. We taping our ankles. Put them shoulder pads on, taping our wrists. Snap them helmets on, and we run down the tunnel to the field. We get to the 50-yard line. The lights is on. It's cold outside. Stadium vibrating. You can see the Patriots symbol painting in the grass. You can smell a new grass. You have the ears for the end camera. You got the head cam following you everywhere on the field. Now, y'all watch football, right? How many of y'all watch the Green Bay Packers, right? We getting ready to play Brett Favre and him. He comes to the line. Blue 42, red 50. But see, I was playing Diva Savin, right? So I was getting down in my stance. I was like, <sighs> I was breathing that cold air. I had steam coming down in my helmet. I had Vaseline on these nice arms so I looked good on TV, right? So, true story, right? So when he snaps the ball, Brett Favre, he just, he, he drops back. And when he saw me coming around the corner, he took off. Ah, ah, he started running and screaming. But being 6'8", 300 pounds, I snatched him up. Now, I was at the 40-yard line on national television. I started doing what every last one of y'all started doing. I started dancing. I was like, lean with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock. I started having fun. Everyone say, having fun? Having fun. Working hard? Pays off. See, it was something else, young ladies and young men, I wanted to do great in my life. See, I wanted to get married, have some beautiful kids, and see my wife. See, she not just my wife. That's my queen. See, my queen, young lady, she come home every night to a nice hot bubble bath. She got her candles lit in the side of her tub with a nice little chocolate, some M&Ms, and Kit Kats. She get roses every chance I get. She get roses for no reason. She get roses because she my queen, because I love her. All my young ladies say, I am, I am. A, princess. a princess. Say, I am, I am. Valuable. valuable. All my young men in here, how many of my young men love football? <laughs> Who can tell me what NFL stand for? I can't hear you. Is that your final answer? NFL stands for not for long. <laughs> Average career in the NFL is two years. How many years? Two. How many? Two. But I have a question. How long does your relationship with Jesus last? Forever. Say it like you mean it. Forever. I love for you to say what you mean and mean what you Because a lot of times we say a lot of things we don't mean, right? So it leads me to this. Do I have any princesses in the house? So here we go. See, I have three beautiful daughters. I have three handsome sons. I have the Brady Bunch. Okay? But I'm going to share with you in here tonight, and for all you young people in here tonight, if your father never been there to tell you, I stand here and tell you that I love every last one of you. By the time I'm done tonight, you'll know that. But here's my question to all my young princesses. If I gave you $55,000, would you give all your money to your boyfriend? <laughs> Okay. She said, heck no. Okay, let's say, ladies, mm, let's say if I gave you $25,000, would you give all your money to your boyfriend? She's like, no. Okay, let's make it reasonable, ladies. Mm, let me think. Oh, I got one. I got one. Here we go. Let's say if I gave you two. Hundred and fifty dollars. Would you give all your money to your boyfriend? Her one girl said, I give him a little bit. Okay. So here we go. If you talking, you can't hear me. Here we go. So here's my question. So if you wouldn't give your boyfriend that little bit of money, then why would you think to want to give him your body so easily? Can we just be real transparent tonight and real? I believe in sharing the truth because the truth will set you free. Anybody in here want to be free? 
So here we go. I share this with you because a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but I am. Like I said, I have three beautiful daughters, three handsome sons. I'm a young man. Why am I sharing this with you? Because it, I use the money phrase because it gets a lot of people's attention. But here's the bottom line. What I'm really talking to you about, there's a hormone called oxytocin, right? This hormone, our father designed it for something good. Everything God did, he, he, he made it good, okay? But what happens is when we're young, we start doing things we have no business doing. And let me just confess to you in here tonight, when I was a young man, I started doing some things I had no business doing. Now, it's easy for me to say nobody shared that with me, but not for you after tonight. So what am I sharing with you? They actually did a, they did a, a very scientific study on this. They said when this is abused, when this hormone is abused, it's worse than a person being on drugs or alcohol. So let me give you a visual of what this, this hormone is like. It's like taking two pieces, of, two pieces of paper together and gluing them together, right? And when the glue dry and you try to separate the paper, what happens? Oh, and it's the next one. He said he love you. And it's the next one. He said he love you. So about time you do get a real man to treat you like a queen, poof, all you have is confetti to offer. And then you wonder why you talk back to your mom and so disrespectful because it starts breaking down your character and your integrity. This is why you can see a young lady and nine times out of ten, she's dating a dude way older than her. How many of y'all in here know somebody dating somebody way older than her? Put your hands down. And it could be her best friend, her cousin, her sister, her counselor. They be like, you need to leave him alone. He's no good. He's way older than you. And she be like, I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave him. And three days later, what do you see? And it's dangerous. This is what's breaking up homes. And it's becoming a generational curse. So many young people are scarred and wounded and broken today. And then the young kids, they feel, you feel sitting here tonight that it's your fault about the choices your mama and daddy make. Let me tell you something. God gave you your own fingerprint. There will never, ever be another person like you to walk the face of this earth. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. But if I continue to allow the world to download inside of me and I'm thinking everything the world has given me is the way I need to walk, it's going to continue to steal from me. But let me give you the flip side what it does to a male. When he can't get what he want, when he want it, how he want it, and where he want it, he will hit a woman. So here's the antidote I tell my daughters and I'm going to share with you in here tonight. To all my young, my young princesses in here tonight, say, I will, I will. Hold, on hold on to my cookies. Everyone say first half. First half. Everyone say second half. Second half. Everyone say game time. game time. Now here's what I'm sharing with you in here tonight. I'm going to reiterate my story. I'm still on this journey, okay? I grew up in the number one murder capital with a mom raising four boys by herself. First time meeting my father, I'm bearing him. Never knew my grandfathers. No one in my family ever been to college. No one in my city had ever made it out doing anything great with their life. I was being highly recruited by every Division I school in the country for basketball and football. Still holding most sacks in the state of California. 2020 basketball games, single season rebound record, 334 rebounds. See, when it came to playing sports, I wanted everybody to praise me and lift me up. But you know what my mom would always tell me? She'd say, Devin, your friends are not your friends. She'd say, what you do in the dark comes to the light. And you know what? I was hard-headed. So we held a big press conference at my mom's house. CNN, ABC, CBS, you can hear the helicopter hovering. <laughs> Everyone's at my mom's house. There's a ring at the doorbell. I'm in the back with my USC hat, my T-shirt. I'm about to announce on national television what college I'm choosing to go to. So my little brother, Kevin, he answers the door. CNN walks in, ABC, CBS, and right behind CBS was the police. The police was in my mom's house on one of the proudest days of my life, taking me to jail. Because I made one wrong choice listening to a wrong voice. See, young people, you keep hanging out with the wrong crowd, you will eventually start doing what they do. 
For me, I started selling drugs. I high cost for a low living. Wasn't no warnings, no slap on the wrist. I was arrested on national television and put in the back of a police car on national television around the world. I was embarrassed, humiliated, brokenhearted. I went straight to jail, no warnings, no slap on the wrist. And you know what those dream breakers did, them dream breaker friends did when they laughed at me? I'm talking about the ones who want you to drink, the ones who want you to smoke. They laughed at me. They said, oh, that's what he get for hanging with us. See, nobody had to tell me what they did. I heard them with my own ears and saw it with my own eyes. And I went straight to jail. But you know who I really embarrassed? My mom. I humiliated all my teachers and coaches, everyone that was pouring into me, praying for me when I didn't know to pray for myself. And I sat in that jail cell and I cried every day. Young people, the only reason I'm standing before you tonight, because for one, all I can think about sitting in there is what my mother used to say to me and my brothers. It don't matter where you are, you can always hit your knees and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And for this young man, I got down in that jail cell on both of these knees and I began to cry to the Lord to change my life. As I began to cry to the Lord to change my life, and that's when I wrote my quote down. Because I realized if I'm trying, I'm flying, but if I don't, I won't. And like I say, the only reason I stand before you tonight, because I'm here to let you know, true champions don't give up, they get up. What am I sharing with you in here tonight? Young people, let me encourage you. And mom and dad, as some of you in here tonight, you've been going through so much. Can I just encourage you? There's only one thing that separates winners and losers. Winners look at what they're going to. Losers look at what they're going through. You were not born winners or losers. You were born choosers. Jesus gave us the opportunity to choose, to choose what I'm going to do with my life. One thing, like I told you, you're going to know by the time I walk off this platform tonight, what my heart and my life is. See, this journey was something else. I was destined, and my destiny, was, I believe, was to go to the NFL, but I didn't realize the trip I had to take, and then down this journey I had to walk. And one of the greatest things happened to me. The Lord gave me a second chance. Everyone say second chance. I found myself in junior college. I start getting to class on time. I start raising my hand participating. I start receiving a great education. You know why? Because if I'm trying, I'm trying. But if I don't, I, I become an honor roll student. I go to Kentucky State, become an academic All-American in one year. I go to the Super Bowl in my rookie year. What am I simply sharing with you? See, I remember, and I won't ever forget this, when I signed my contract, my first million dollar contract, and I tell people like this all the time. I was just speaking in a room with a bunch of millionaires and billionaires this past weekend. And I told them, I said, well, I remember signing my name, and as fast as I signed my name on a million dollar contract, it was like the road runner came and took the money. It was gone. And you know what I'm saying with you is simply this. See, after all the things I've lost, all the things I've been through, all the things I've had to overcome, and then my whole time, I'm thinking my destiny is to be in the NFL. But the Lord gave me 13 years playing professionally. But you know what it is? Here was my destiny. Because see, even today when I'm about to sign more million dollar contracts, the greatest contract I've ever signed, young people, mom and dad, is my name in the life of the Lamb's Life for book. My name in that book for life. That's the greatest contract I've ever signed. Because I don't care what comes behind it. It's not going to move me. It's not going to make me move because I believe it was a test to walk into a room with millionaires and billionaires. But I said, Daddy, I'm going to break down right here and I ain't putting none of that over you. I don't care what nothing else look like. You've been too good to me. You've given me so much. Young people in here tonight, Mom and Dad, see, the bottom line of this frying pan, one thing Devin Wyman learned was I had to take my life out of my own hands. 
and put them in the biggest hands ever. And see, when you get in the relationship with the Lord, see, it's something called trust. It's a word called faith. It's a word called believing. See, I'm going to close with you like this. Two things. I want to ask everyone in here tonight, because I know I'm talking to leaders in here tonight, and I know I'm talking to young people who are going to change the world, but I want to ask y'all, because I know everyone in here is so smart, I want to ask you a question. Did Joseph and Mary do anything to conceive Jesus? I can't hear you talk to me. Man, y'all so smart. How did she know she was going to have a child? Huh? The angel gave her a word. Everyone say word. word. Now, here's the thing about a word. The Lord sent me here to give you a word tonight. Amen? Now, here's the thing about a word. One thing I understand with revelation knowledge is the angel gave her a word, but she had to believe it to receive it. Everyone say word. word. Believe. believe. Receive. receive. Conceive. She, she allowed herself to be pregnant with it. What am I saying? You have to be willing to trust. You have to be willing to guard the word that's in you. Whatever you believe in for, let us get on the same page real quick. Hey, do y'all love having dreams? Have you ever had a dream that was so good, you woke up in the morning, you couldn't remember what you dreamed about? Didn't you want to go back to sleep? Me too, right? But everyone say dream. Everyone say vision. vision. Everyone say big vision. vision. I love sharing this because there's a difference between a dream and a vision. Because see, a dream, you see it, but then whoosh, it's gone. But a vision, you'll see it tonight. You'll see it in the middle of the night. You'll see it in the morning. You'll see it throughout the day. You, do, you know one thing about a vision? You'll see it till you accomplished it. Uh, the reason I love sharing this, there was a blind lady. Everyone say blind. She was a multi-millionaire. Everyone say multi-millionaire. This lady was blind, and she had millions of dollars, and they asked her one question. What can be worse than being blind? She said, that's very simple. She said, having sight but no vision. Do you know why sight only sees what is, vision sees what could be? Everyone say could be. Sight is a function of your eyes, but vision is very different. It is a function of your heart. Therefore, I don't believe what my eyes see. I believe what my heart believes because what my heart believes is bigger than what I see. So what did I see in my household growing up? I'm watching Cosby Show, Dukes of Hazard, Monday Night Football. I walk outside. I have people selling drugs, smoking drugs, gunshots going off at the corner. But I would dribble my basketball, and I'd go up to the middle school, and I'd shoot hoop for hours. Who you think protect me? I can't hear you. If he did it for me, can he do it for you? Everyone, y'all see this bar? I'm just a young man who thinks like this, I imagine. I imagine things because my daddy's so good. When I talk about Jesus, and I'm always praying when I talk to him, I said, I, I really, I, I, I can't even imagine what he really went through to give me life. By him allowing people to just beat him and spit on him and take him through it. And then as young people, we grow up and we talk back with no respect. We act like we don't understand. As a parent, we let our kids go in a room with a computer on doing their homework, listening to things on the computer. They got their cell phone right there where they texting and on Instagram and then the TV is on and they watching the TV and with all this stuff going along the bottom. Who's raising our children? But then we so quick to say they bad and they rude. My way of life is kindness. I'm grateful for what I've been called to do. I share with you simply like this. 
when I get the opportunity to stand on the platform and bend this into steel three, four times a day sometime. And people say, man, I know you're tired. I can't get tired of my work. This is what I was called to do. And what I ought to do, I will do. I can only imagine how thick the nails had to be to hold him to a cross. Because I was at a point in my life, I was ready to quit traveling. I was ready to quit speaking. I wanted to be home with my family. And I sat in a hotel room and I had a visitation. And he replayed the whole day to me. And he was just showing me the faces of young people and adults. And as he was showing me their faces, he said, I don't want you to give my people spiritual highs, Devin. I called you to this. He said, when you lift them over the bar, their heads is touching the heavens. By the time you roll a frying pan, their energy is through the roof. But when Satan comes for my word, they have no word in them. And that's what demons enter. So when I got young people cutting their cell, committing suicide, and they think that way of life is okay. Because who's willing to step up and tell them the truth? When I read the Gospel of Mark chapter 5, and they talk about the legion roaming in the tomb, night and day, screaming out loud, cutting himself. And he had two to 6,000 demons in him. Why would I address the situation with a young kid in middle school and elementary school cutting themselves any different? This is how real we live in. Like I said, I come to speak the truth because I'm hoping the truth will set you free. Like I said, the bottom line for me, I can only imagine how thick the nails had to be. And when he broke me down, he said, the bar you use in heaven. Imagine what held my son to that cross. I chose you for this. With every head bow, every eye closed. I'd like to speak a word of prayer over your life tonight. To every mom and dad and every young person in the building tonight. Father, we come here in this building as a congregation and as an assembly hoping to hear something that will draw us closer unto you. We don't need to package you up, Father. You are God Almighty all by yourself. You've given us the opportunity to serve you and to honor you. I'm praying right now that not one soul will walk out of here the way they walked in, scarred, wounded, and broken, Father. I come to you tonight, Father hoping that somebody will hear your voice and not mine and answer the call. That they know when they walk out of here, they sign the greatest contract with their name in the life of book. The book of life, Father. That they'll be willing to surrender all unto you. That a mother and father will say, I don't want to play with God. But I need him to show up. So, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to do what it is you do. With every head bowed and every eye closed in this sanctuary tonight. I want this moment to be between you and your Heavenly Father. If you've never known the Lord, tonight is the night that you get a fresh new start. Tonight is the night that you get to have a second chance to live a great second half. See, our Father don't care about our first half because he's in the business of giving second halves. It's a lot of people that's not living today. I lost one of my, close best, my closest friends back in November where every head by every eye closed. This is not a long decision. This is not something I really think I need to have to think about. This is serious business. This is not about my friend, my sister, my brother, my mother, my dad, but this is between you and your heavenly father. Saying, I don't want to have to go through what Devin went through. 
where even the other elder that's come before me, what they have to go through. Because a good listener is a good learner. Where every head by every eye closed, I'm going to simply ask you, if you need a fresh new start tonight to get a relationship with Jesus, I'm asking you to slide your hand up right now, right where you are. Hold it up high. Hallelujah, amen. Put your hands down. You already know. I want you to do something bold for me. For everyone that raised their hand, I want this to be business for you. I want you to seek a relationship with Jesus. I'm asking you to come stand at this altar and make a bold statement that today is your day, that you get your second chance to live your second half, that you may learn and know who Jesus is, that you may get the word of God to be alive inside of you, that the spirit of the living God will lead you the rest of your days as you walk the face of this earth. For every young person and every mom and dad that raised your hand, I'm asking you to come stand at this altar with me right now. son, 25 years old, handsome kid, got a full ride scholarship for architecture, went to Iowa State, wanted to hang out with the wrong crowd, started smoking marijuana, and his so-called friends slipped some K2 on him. Do you know how as a parent, how it feel to watch your child scream at a TV? And I only can imagine if I didn't have a relationship with Jesus, where he would be at today. Can I tell you, it took three and a half long years of him in and out of rehabs. But today he's in his right mind. Can I tell you what it's like to have your oldest daughter, 24 years old, graduate college, go to King's College in New York. Her school was inside the Empire State Building. Her freshman year, she transferred home to UNT, graduates. She get an awesome job, get her own apartment. Meet some, good, some dude over, over, over online in New Jersey and just moves him in with her. Do you know how to make a father feel that that's his baby? But that young man is saved today. What am I sharing with you? wake up we get an opportunity to live a perfect life but life gonna throw challenges at us and see when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior young people let me share this with you is there anybody else who want to join us right now let me encourage you with this amen I knew it was Don't ever be ashamed of Jesus. Do y'all hear me? Don't ever. When you get to church, you tell your youth pastors, you tell them you want to know Jesus. You want to know what God, you know what I learned? I learned so many people that's in church, they've never read the beginning of the Bible. They never read the first three chapters of Genesis, so they don't even know the good works that God has done. I want to encourage you tonight. When you read your word, start at the beginning. You know what I love about the beginning? Because you're getting a fresh new start tonight.
This bar is in the youth for a very important reason because in my first half, I was on this path and I was hanging down here at the bottom where it's overcrowded. But there was a man who walked into my life just like I walked into your life tonight. I didn't know him, you didn't know me. But you know what he said? He said, I love you, Devin. And he said, I'm simply here to let you know, don't let your dreams, don't let your goals, and don't let your faith in God hang down here at the bottom. He said, your life was not designed to live at the bottom. It was designed to live at the... And you know that day what I learned? It was never too late to make a U-turn. See, you get to make a U-turn tonight. Is there a mom or dad who want to join us? The first thing I want you to do is just hold your arms up like this. Hold them up high. Because the first thing you do is say, I surrender to the Lord. Everyone say, I surrender. I surrender all, Lord. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me up. Right here. to be the Lord and Savior of this world. Say it like you mean it. Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I will serve you. I will honor you. I will not be ashamed of you. Holy Spirit, teach me. Cleanse me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Teach me the word of God that I may be the leader of my household as a young person. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. So you want to come up? Come on, can y'all give it up for Mr. Devin? For supporting his story that he shared, what God's done in his life. Come on, can everybody say, I want y'all to stay here. Can everybody else stand? Come on, can we get some leaders to come forward tonight? If you got some friends up here, I want you to come up with them. Lindsay and the worship team is going to sing, but come on, for the next couple minutes, can we pray with our friends up here before we dismiss tonight? Go ahead, Lindsay, and sing.
sing on a Wednesday night. That's a song you can sing on a Thursday morning. Amen. That's a song you can sing on Friday. That's a song you can sing on the weekends. That's a song you can sing as you go back. Listen, for those of you who gave your heart and life to Christ tonight for the first time, maybe as a re rededication, we want to say welcome to the family of God. And we want to say that's a big move tonight. The greatest night of your life tonight. So listen, I want to say a couple things to you, and then we're going to pray for you. If you don't have a home church, if you don't have a home youth group, man, the house at North Judson, the house here at Valpo, if you don't have a home church on Sundays, 9 or 11 o'clock this Sunday, it's Mother's Day. What better way to celebrate? And I tell you, if you've never followed Jesus Christ in water baptism on, in May, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, we're doing a water baptism. You can sign up right back in the back at that guest services. One of our leaders is going to be back there. And I want to challenge you. Listen, tonight is just the beginning of what God wants to do in your life. Get plugged into a youth group. Get plugged into a church. Get plugged into a small group. Hey, can we just thank Devin Wyman one more time for sharing the message and the story with us tonight? Come here, Devin. Come back up here real quick, man. Listen, he deposited into us, and so now we're going to deposit back in here. Come on, Jesse. I know you travel with him. Come on, my man. This is, this is his right-hand man, Jesse. Been hanging out with him tonight. Devin was doing some school assemblies today. And uh, he's going uh, to, do you have any, you go on Friday. We're going to go hang out with you Friday. You got a school assembly Friday, I know. And, but so listen, I want you to stretch forth your hand towards that. Come on, Jesse. Come stand over here with him, man. Stretch forth your hand towards Jesse and Devin. And come on, we're going to pray for him as he travels, as he shares his message, as he shares his story, that God would just continue to use him. God, thank you for Devin. God, thank you, Lord, for Jesse. God, Lord, for bringing them here tonight. Thank you for the deposit, Lord, that they put in our lives. God, for those who are watching tonight, God, as they go, God, I pray, Lord, for safe travels. God, I pray for, Lord, a fresh anointing, God, over their life, God, over their ministry, that you'll begin to just use them, multiply their influence, God, in cities, God, in states, God, across the country, God, across this world. God, that you'll use them beyond their imaginations. God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Amen. Hey, listen, before you leave tonight, I want to remind you we got summer camp next Wednesday, graduation night. Listen, make sure you say thanks to Devin. I want to pray, God, thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for salvation tonight. God, keep us safe as we go. God, bring us back safe next Wednesday. God, Sunday, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, you have a good night, a good week. We'll see you back next week. 
Hey, what's going on? We want to say thanks for hanging out with us again today. We don't take it lightly when people take time out of their schedule to be with us. We pray that the service spoke to you today, that God challenged you in some way. Hey, I want to remind you, download our new app. Uh, you can download it to any smartphone, any Droid device, and it lets you stay up to date with, with what's going on at Heartland. It'll let you see other services uh, that we've had in the past. And also, hey, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your stories. We want to pray with you. We want to know what's going on in your life. So please take time, shoot us a message at prayer at hcc3d.com. We'd love to hear what God is doing in you and through you. And also, lastly, this has been a blessing to you and this messages have encouraged you. We just ask maybe you'd like to give financially. There's a tab that you can click that it says support here and you can click that, you can give an offering. You can also use PushPay, which is our app. So we'd love to be able to partner with you financially as well as we expand the kingdom. Hey, thanks again for being with us. Hope you have a blessed week and we hope to see you soon.